Welcome to peak hour on the Nullarbor. You can travel for days across this 200,000 square kilometre limestone plain and the vista barely changes. It's flat and featureless. At least that's how it appears from the surface. Ninety metres below ground, this is a part of Australia's Nullarbor most people don't see. There's at least ten lakes like this in a vast system of underground caves that are unique in the world. This is Wee Bubby Cave. Like many of the Nullarbor caves, it's filled with salty water. What makes the caves unique is that they lie beneath a virtual desert. There aren't supposed to be caves under deserts. To make caves in limestone, you need a lot of rain. Yet we know the Nullarbor receives only a sprinkle of rain each year. So how on earth did these vast water-filled caves and tunnels get here? These divers are helping scientists find out. They venture into a strange world, where the water's so clear, it's almost as if they're suspended in space. It appears lifeless. There's no fish, no seaweed, only strange bacteria, which form finger-like curtains of white crystals beneath rocky ledges. Geographers believe the Nullarbor Plain has been mostly dry since it emerged from the sea around 15 million years ago. Despite this, many scientists say there simply must have been wetter times in the past for such massive caves to be forged beneath the surface. Julia James, a chemist at the University of Sydney, has her own ideas on the subject. She says the plane need not have been deluged. Her theory on how the caves formed, based on studies of the waters inside them, makes sense even if the plateau has only ever seen occasional showers. The theory works like this. Beneath the Nullarbor is a water table, which over time dissolves as much of the limestone as it possibly can but not enough to form actual cavities in the rock. When rainwater seeps through from the surface, you need only the tiniest amount, a very unusual chemical reaction takes place. The seepage water mixes with the inert water beneath it, giving it renewed aggressive power to dissolve much more limestone and begin to make a cave. This extraordinary mixing process has not been identified in caves anywhere else in the world. We have the sample here, Cathy, that was taken at minus 33.3 metres. So it's the deep sample. And as I Tests little... like this one, which measures the acidity of the water at various depths, helped Julia devise her novel theory. Right. The pH has risen to 8.93. Is that high? That's very high. Exceptionally Not high all the work is underground. The Nullarbor is so vast that gathering the data means travelling up to 350 kilometres between caves. It takes a touch of Indiana Jones to explore the mysteries beneath the Nullarbor. Get a bit more toe on the ladder and hands in from behind. Okay. The longer you stay on the ladder, the tighter you get. 
Oh, you're doing really well, so that's great. It's not quite the Temple of Doom, but close enough. In this cave, Julia collects more water samples to see if their chemical makeup fits with her theory. This is the seepage water that I was telling you about, that it's very, very difficult to collect on the Nullarbor because it's very rare. We're fortunate that we had that storm two days ago. Now, this water was once water rain that sample. seeped down through the rock from the surface. It's the stuff that reactivates the cave-making powers of the water table. See, this is a very slow... For years, the big mystery about the Nullarbor Caves was whether they were dead or alive, whether the processes that formed them had finished or were still at work. It now appears that far from being relics of a bygone era, these caves are more like massive chemical mixing pots in a constant state of change. These divers are inside one of those mixing pots, called Tommy Graham's cave, which has some rather tight passages. They're on a mission to collect samples for analysis back in Sydney. They're part of a team that holds the world record for the longest cave dive ever, 6.8 kilometres in 1983. It's through their efforts that Julia discovered another important phenomenon in the creation of the Nullarbor Caves. Called a halocline, it's a distinct boundary that forms between very salty water deep down and less salty water on top. At the interface of these two layers, shown as a line of discoloration on the far wall of this cave, dissolved limestone comes back out of solution as white crystals that collect on the walls and floor. Drilling into deposits that have built up in this way over long periods is like drilling back in time. In some areas, four centimetres of rock has been found to represent 140,000 years worth of crystal deposits. As far as we know, there's no sunken treasures beneath the Nullarbor. But cave diver Ron Allum is clutching something worth its weight in limestone. This is Tommy Graham's cave. cave. Oh, so wow. Let's have a look. Have a look. You this got is, it. Yeah, this is a one you from 20 metres, so. Yeah. It's amazing. Ah. Uh, it came out in three pieces. Right? Yeah. So how long did it take you to get this? Well, it took five day divers, two days to get it, and we were working at 22 metres. So. A lot of work, eh? <laughs> a lot of work and a lot of air. Yeah. Mm. The solid section of core, seen here on the right, will be dated by analysing the proportions of radioactive elements it contains. The longer portion, riddled with holes, was completely unexpected. While it can't be dated by conventional techniques, it's hoped it too will play some role in revealing the ancient processes that formed the Nullarbor's remarkable hidden labyrinth.